time for another coffee. What have we got on today? Um, we're going to fit the alarm system into the van. So we've got the old Peugeot J9 coffee van and it's having a Scorpion alarm system fitted to it. So um, I've got this alarm off of, uh, off of Amazon. I'll put links in the description. It's not a bad little unit. It will do the central door locking if you want that kind of thing. Um, but obviously this is very, very basic. So it's really simple, straightforward. We just wanted something that had got ultrasonic sensors and a mobiliser um, just to give us a bit of security. It's all remote control, yeah, nice and simple. So uh, yeah, follow the video, I'll show you how to fit it, and uh, nice and straightforward. Hope you enjoy it. Little job on today. Been on the old Amazon and picked up a uh, nice Scorpion alarm system. This one comes with a separate siren, so it's got a little hooter there, look, nice. Uh, Nice standalone sign, we've got a control unit, wiring loom and ultrasonic sensors. This will immobilise the vehicle as well, so it's a good thing, we can set that up. Um, and we'll wire it all in. This is the engine, um, underneath the cover inside, and it's pretty tidy to be fair, as you can see. Going to put a couple of sensors up the top, looking down the back of the van. Because um, obviously with this, with the sliding doors, we've got no door switches like on a normal car, so the ultrasonics are going to be the main um, pickup inside. You can set this one up to run your central door locking if you've got a car with a, a you know door locking fitted to it. You can do all of that. Um, all depends on how you want to wire it. There's loads of different ways. The instructions are good, so uh, yeah, let's uh, crack on and see what we can do. So the front grill bonnet you put like the screwdriver in there, turn these little latches and then the front comes away. You've got your heater matrix, radiator, radiator header tank. There's an air filter behind here. I'm just looking to see if we've got any room for the alarm siren. It's looking a bit tight to be fair, there's not a lot. There's a bit of space there, I suppose. Right, so these little mesh things look like they come off. Just do we, ah, there we go, just pull those little clips there, look, and that comes out, comes away. That's that out of the way. And then we've got the fuel filter, little heater matrix, we've got some brake fluid, and it looks like clutch fluid reservoir there. Uh, horn. <laughs> um, so I think this siren could go in here. Go with that. A little washer on there, through there, and then through that one there. So this space in this front grill area, it brilliant light, like, loads of room there for this little siren. And there's a couple of holes there already. We can we can go with those. Bit fiddly, get your fingers in. But we'll get that uh, siren done up nicely. Where's that up? Old school, get the old spanners on there, look. When things are tight and confined, you just have to use what you can. And this, these little ratchet spanners are great. I'm gonna to have to just angle that forward a little bit just to get it away from those heater hoses. Um, so I'm gonna to have to drill one hole at the bottom. Radiator here. Yeah, famous last words. <laughs> just try and use my thumb on that on that front headlight there, just to when the drill pops through, I can just stop it from going too far. If you're doing it freehand, you've got a real good chance of going through the rad.
fiddly fiddly trying to get out through there and if I get it between my fingers, what do you reckon? I'm gonna drop it. Oh gotcha. Gotcha. Where's that one up as well then? Not had any nasty surprises on the van really, it's been uh, pretty good, you take these front grills and these meshes off and you just don't know if you're going to find a big hole, a big rust hole, because it is so old. Nice and tight. But as a whole yeah, it's yeah. been really good. Siren's in. And then the wire we can poke through the little hole at the top there. And uh, needs extending. I might just extend it first and put some sheathed wire through so that it saves it if it catches it's not going to short out so I've got some nice shielded two core wire there so I've just split this and uh, literally if we just chomp it down the end just to break the cord on it there pull that back we can then peel into it chop them bits off Strip back a little bit either side. Now this I'm going to take this quite quite the way back like that. I can then split that. Do the same thing with that one. I give this one a bit more because it's thinner wire. And I'll twist in my wires here. Red to red. I use this same technique for most of the wiring on the van through this alarm system fitting so um, I'm not going to obviously go into really detail every time I twist and solder wire but this time I will do so you can really get a good idea as to what I'm doing so I'm twisting and twisting them first and then I'm going to solder them together and then we'll we'll tape them up you can use heat shrink if you want but uh, solder those up I'll do like using the tape it's quite good for most of these jobs heat shrink is even better but um, like I say tape does do a fine job just get the soldering iron on there heat the wire first and then add the flux solder to it and we get the tape These in there so if I just pull them pull them back across like that flatten them out of it and then tape them up it's always better to flatten it back and then tape it up rather than taping the bare soldered wire and then having it sort of sticking out sharp, it's uh, it's all flush now. You could use heat shrink if you want to, uh, but this is going to be just fine once I've wrapped the whole lot. So I've got to take the whole loom up anyway, so I'm going to go all the way well, back as far as I can with that now. So to start down here. And then work my way up. It's always easier as well to tape these looms up if you can keep the tape on the roll rather than ripping a piece off and doing it, you know, a bit at a time. The tension you can carry in the tape makes it look a lot smoother if you can keep so it on the roll. There. And then go up as far as you can with that. Ha <laughs> ha, he's got a wrap. I've got a wrap. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know if I can untangle it. Oh, he's done it. Oh. There we go. Saved it. Saved it just. Just about. Right then. So. That's that there. Now then, what we can do is uh, bring this round and feed it in. I might even go from the top there. So let's find a decent size hole we've got. There's, a, there's one just there, so we'll go straight through that. And inside, through into the engine bay. And we should be able to pull that from the other side. You can see that coming through in here. Just there, look. And we'll pull that through. From a giant tub of cable ties, I can 
grab one of them and bring that round and I'm just going to go round that, that little hose there just to keep this all neat and tidy and save it rattling and chafing on something. I can just go around like that. Yeah, beautiful. Snip that off. Jobs are good in. Sirens in. Let's go inside and wire it all up. I just make sure I can get this mesh back on again and then we can put the grill back on the front as well because we're all finished in there. There we go, look as if by magic. Make those little uh, clips across. Bingo! It's not pressing against that. Right. Let's have a look. We've got instructions and user guide. They are. Um, that's his wiring diagram, which is probably looks worse than it is, but it's really straightforward. Because we've got no door central lock in or anything like that, we are literally just going straight, straight in, positive, negative, and ultrasonics which we've got here. So let's just get them off the off the control unit. So yeah, we've got these here. I can snip those, snip that off there. We can separate that then. There we go, there's his ultrasonics, which we're gonna fit into the top corners. We've got a control unit and we get two little remotes. 66 pound this was his Scorpion system from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description, but what an absolute bargain. Really good. And then we get the loom. So let's have a look at this. Let's get this undone and see what we're gonna do. Okay, okay. So there it is, there's his loom, which literally shoves straight into that. Like so. And the ultrasonics, they will clip into the two uh, little segments there. Get the right way around. So they clip in one left and right. That's the aerial wire. We've got power because it can flash lights. It'll, it'll flash your indicators if you want it to. So we can wire that in as well. Um, but yeah, let's figure out what we've got to do and which ones we need. So to start with, we need to find out the uh, black is the earth. So we'll dig the back wire out of there. That's that's an important one. That's one we need. Okay, so I've got black there. That's the earth wire. That's one we definitely need. We need to figure out where all the central locking uh, system wires are because we don't really need them. This little bunch here, this is um, fused. These are power for the lights, ignition, and the LED that flashes on the dashboard. So again, they can go with the way of the earth wire. And all of the wires that are for the central locking, we can just hide away. We don't need any of that. So uh, let's have a look what we've got going on here. We've got orange. Um, we don't need the orange because that's for the windows. We've got the blue status LED, that's over there. White red boot release, we don't need that. White green ignition input. So we need the white and green. White and green, that's you. So we'll have that one. Yellow is the positive to the siren. So we need that one. That's gonna make the siren wail. Green is the indicator. So we've got them over there anyway. That's, that's good. Indicator out. Uh, red is the positive. We've got that one. Right, that's it. So all of these now, all of this bunch here are all for the central door locking kind of system and setups. We don't need any of that. So what we're going to do is trim them right back. We're going to cut them right back to about here and just take them up because I don't need any of that lot. So just bang all them off. Away with you. Away with you. And I'm just going to snip all these to slightly different lengths. So we get no issues of shorting. Well, actually, we're not far off. Look, 
yeah do you know what that's come out pretty well i like that especially if i twist them like that a bit then they'll definitely all be different lengths and then we can just bind those up because you never know i might fit central lock into this one day um and i could use this unit to power up a door solenoid but i'm not doing it now so i'll just tape all those off get rid of all of them out of the way make a little loom there with them and then we've got the ones that we want here and we'll bring them out and we'll just separate them into another little loom there so if I go round round like that and then we'll create, create his, his new little loom coming off for the ones we want and we can go off of that and then just carry on with the bit there to make that look nice got now there's a little stubby stubby loom the bit we want coming off I just go beyond the fuses just to make sure that it's all shielded nicely bring that around there and carry on with that there we go so that'll do for now until we know where we're going to go any further right so the control unit we've got and we've got this glove box here well just on the the top of this behind here there's a space so if you're underneath the dashboard at the back there the glove box is just there and there's a lovely space right on the top so if I get the unit and I pop that up there and pop it on top of there and then I'm gonna screw that to the top of that glove box there like that lovely spot beautiful so I'll just whiz this out for a minute Just held in four little screws. I just tasked them out, and then this whole glove box just slides out the front. Lid and all. And we've got that lovely space there right on the top where we can put this unit. So let's give it a wipe down. I've got the old, uh, got the Gramex wipes. Links in the description. These are amazing. These are amazing. They're really good. And on there we can just get rid of all the crap and crud off that. I don't think this has been out for a while. Beautiful, looks like new. And then like I said with that, we can get that control unit sitting right there on the back of that. I might even go to feed it in from the top with it on there. That's going there like that. Got the drill, let's have a drill straight through. Straight through there. Straight through there. And the two Two nuts and bolts and a couple of washers. And if I can get that up through there, which is going to be easier said than done. They like a struggle. There it is. That's one of them. So we've got two bolts. These like little ratchet spanners are brilliant for getting into these really awkward, hard to reach places. So all I've got there is my little ratchet spanner, quarter inch with the, a little bit in the end of it. And I can get onto these, these Allen key sockets. Just really good for them confined spaces. Right, and then we've got a control unit. Now I've just got to hope it'll fit through the hole. <laughs> this will be a laugh. 
Let's see if it does. Can I get, where's the wine? Best place to bring the wine. I think I've got to go. Well, there's loads of space under here though. It's a really good spot. There we go. So to find the indicator wire, we've just got a little test light. This is the wire into the indicators on this side. And if we just pop that in with the indicator there flashing, you can hear it. And just touch into these wires. You can see, see how that one's flashing there? That's just positive feed for the indicator. So that's what we're gonna to connect to. We're gonna go for the one this side and one on the other side. So we'll do the same thing over there. Just turn the indicator the other way. Pop down to this side here, and here we are. It's just connected to plug, and again, it's going to be the red. I would think it's going to be the same. Yeah, there you go. Look, but connecting to the other ones, you can see there's nothing going on at all. So it's definitely that one. So we knew we've got a green wire either side for the indicators. So we want one coming this way and connecting into that one and one going the other way to connect into the other one. So in his little bag of bits as well here we get the blue wire. This is for the immobiliser circuit. Now we've just got to connect those into the back of the unit. There's two little um, terminals there. And then we also get his ultrasonic brackets in here which we've got to feed across. So let's get these, uh, get these all in and connect the immobiliser wires up as well because they've got to come across what we're going to do is basically just send one green this way and all the rest because they've got ignition and earth and positive can go over towards the ignition switch along with the immobiliser circuit so I've got one of them in there that's one immobiliser and the second one is going in just by the side of it So them two are both in down and these can go off to his circuit for the immobiliser as well. Alright and then we've got that wired it for the siren and I'll just pull that across. Okay so we've got the siren coming in here now so that's to the yellow there. We've got positive in an earth now the earth we've just got to screw to the body the positive goes to the yellow for the siren feed so that's nice and straightforward so we'll strip back the positive from there siren positive there twist those two together you could have actually screwed the earth from the siren, actually at the siren, you could have screwed it to the bracket if you'd have wanted to do that. And solder that one up. And the black one, we can chip that into the the earth, which was any of these black, the two black wires. So I'm gonna go for this one. I'm just gonna strip that back slightly. All right, that give me a bit, trim a bit off the bottom of that one. And then I can wrap that one into the earth wire there. Like that. Solder that one up as well.
take that one. Beautiful. So, there we go. Now we can tidy this loom up. We can tidy it up. We need to get, oh, we need this, these two, we need to extend the blue immobiliser ones. So, I've got some extension wire here. What I can do is just, again, strip that back and it's nice and insulated this one, which is great. So same thing again, just pull that apart. You can strip them two back as well. These two blue wires for the immobiliser circuit, all they are is basically a switch circuit. When the alarm is armed, there is no continuity between these two wires. The circuit is broken. When the alarm is disarmed, they make a connection and then you can start the car. So you're basically just going to cut either a starter feed, um, a solenoid wire or something like that. It's got to be a pretty low amperage circuit and run it through these two wires. Okay, right, we can take this right from there um, and we'll bring the whole lot in. We'll bring them all in now into one nice loom. Like I said one of the greens is coming off for the indicator on this side. So you can stay there and all of the others I'm going to take back into the loom to go over the other side. So I've got down to here, which is uh, we're getting getting across now. I've just brought off the the two wires for the LED. I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's just keep this going. I'll have to get me across the other side of the van. Well, I think that's about right. Maybe just a little bit more. It's quite a wide one, isn't it? All right, let's go with that. Okay, and then we'll come back to the LED wire lot. And then I'll just bring that round there, and then take this in as well. The taping of the looms just is what makes it look nice. What makes it look a neat job? If you can sort of do this before you actually strap it into the car and get everything about right then uh, it's going to look much neater than if you tried to do it while it was all in place okay right so we've got the warning light and there's loom let's shove it over the other side of the van so we need to get all this lot fed up behind behind the dashboard there Cross over there for now. Uh, so it's the red one for the indicator on this side. Let me just strip that back slightly. ourselves plenty to, to go at about there somewhere. We'll strip the end off that. Twist that in around there. Solder that one in. Right, so same again. Now the loom that's come across, the wires are slightly short, but it's not a problem because we can just use these bits we chopped off earlier just to extend a few of these 
um, into it's such a wide van but it doesn't matter like I said we've got loads of spare wire so um, we can go with this this indicator one was the red one there again so let's uh, let's get into that get a little bit on the tip before we go in okay here we go let's be quick And again we can take that back, make it nice and neat and obviously extend that loom where we've just put the extended wire in. Now we've got this uh, mobiliser circuit there. All right, so that's the red one we're going to have to chop there. So we literally just cut straight through that. Quite close to this so we can hide the wires. And again, picking your circuit to do your immobiliser, I've gone for the starter circuit, so I've got my test light, I've just gone into the back of the ignition switch, pressed it, found out which is the starter feed, cut it, and then joined it in. So it's not bad. You can use like a fuel pump circuit if you've got a modern car. So uh, it really does de just depends on what vehicle you've got to which one you're going to chop. Positive feed again, straight into the back of the ignition switch, and then we'll... Um, using the test light just find a feed where the light is constantly lit this is going to power the alarm system so this is where the alarm gets its main feed from we've then got an ignition feed which is just a sensor wire all this is doing is just sensing when the ignition's on so again put your test light on turn the ignition on to find yeah, that the feed the and then we're going to find the earth wire now I'm going to take this straight off of the earth that's bolted in driving most of the consumers on the front of the vehicle you can either go to a really good bit of bare body there we go it's all connected um, a bare bit of metal you can drill a hole into the into the um, the frame of the body if you want to do it that way that alarm might go off in a minute and then we just solder it up as well make sure that's a really good connection okay all right let's see what we've got there okay so it's it's disarmed that's good Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Let's get these wires tidied up. It's a bit of a mess under here at the minute, but um, I've got another video coming soon where I'm going to put a new ignition switch in as well. So um, this will look a lot better in, in the future. Right, then we've got the ultrasonics here. So uh, let's unravel these. Yay, feeding it round. So we've got, we've got plenty to get up where I want it to be up there. Whew, that's a relief. Let's get the drill and get that, uh, get the little clip thing screwed up. Right, and I reckon about there somewhere. Wasn't sure if the wire was going to be long enough, yeah. but uh, it was, which is great news. You get the little screws and everything with this. Pop a little eighth hole through the side there. Super stuff. Feed that wire back into the trim, just to hide it out of the way. Oh, what we found here. Oh, I found another. There's plenty of dodgy wires on this van. I keep pulling them out. I found another one in here. Look, this one's not going to stay there for long. I'll soon get rid of that. Yeah. Where's that going? Who's put that in? You ain't staying there. <laughs> Yank that one out. Some crappy old wire. Let's get rid of that. Sensor in here nicely now. Get that tucked away in the, in the back of that. Just gotta be careful when you're feeding it in that you don't you don't pinch the wire and, and trap it on the sharp edge. Just make sure it's sat into that trim down the edge nicely. Just be careful putting it back and uh, you won't have a problem. Beautiful. Looks really nice that. And then the little bit of wire you get left over at the bottom, we just wrap it up and put a cable tie around and, and hide it out of the way. So let's get down there. Okay, let's get this tidied up under here then. Yeah, just ravel it up into a bunch and then tape it out of the way. You can't shorten these ultrasonic wires, you have to keep them long. Ah, oh, there we go. That's pretty good. Uh, we'll get that second one plugged in next to that one. There we 
go, that's the other sensor in, ready for feeding around here. And again, it's just at the bottom of the, just about there somewhere. There we go. Feed that wire up now, and clip that in. Like that, and same again with the trim. I'll just pull that off. And feed that round and into that. This side, you've obviously got loads more wire it's not going all the way around the car but uh, it's a pain you can't trim these down but you know it is what it is back a bit of tape around it's told it there I won't get a tie Right, and there we go. So let's show you around. There's the fuses for the alarm. We've got the control unit tucked away up the top there. Ultrasonics coming in and a wide up either side on the top. We've brought all the wiring across through the top of the dash. And, and I've tidied up all the ignition wiring. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm pleased with that. So. Uh, Let's go and get the remote and try it. Just found a nice blank switch base there. Eight millimeter hole through it. And then when you press the alarm system now to lock it down, light comes on, beautiful. There we go. Glowing like a good one. So we've got the remote, we've got the van. If I press the lock button, you get the lights flashing and the unlock days she's all bowled up bells and whistles are all good so there we go that's the alarm system all fitted working like a dream really pleased with that links in the description for the alarm system and all the tools and stuff used so um please drop me a little thumbs up like and subscribe and stick with me for the next video there's loads more to come thanks for watching